Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a comic book channel titled Collectibles Dad who says that comic book YouTubers are continuing to lie and hiding the truth, not telling us the whole story. Is this guy crazy? Does he even know what he's talking about? Who is this guy talking about? Well, he just made this video and it's kind of gotten some traction. It was recommended to me. And uh, let's take a look at this, react to it, and see if this guy's off his rocker. Why won't comic book YouTubers tell you these basic facts? I have come uh -oh. here to chew bubblegum. Golden Age Guru. Shots fired. And I'm all out of bubblegum. You will not hear this on any other comic book YouTube channel because I watch them. I watch a variety of different ones and they'll say there are a lot of dealers that are comic book YouTubers and I think that Half that kind of, of sways are, not more. some of the talk as far as you know what's important to get now and that sort of thing. I will touch on that right here just to start the video. There are not many comic books out there guys unless it's a very limited print of something that you are not gonna have access to at some point down the line. What you understand is we are going through a third party grading boom like no other. In the collectible space, the companies that are really doing the most, that have really grown the most over the last five years, it is third party. CGC's grading. made more money than anybody. And for a good reason. You know, I know for CGC and comic books, there's been a lot of talk here recently. Some of the challenges that they've come about, they've got lawsuits going on, people trying to scam. People are going to scam when there's big money involved, and there has been a lot more money involved in this space over the it's last kind of really like five years. Ball. But the reason why third-party grading is so damn popular, it's really, really simple. I'll use an example of a book that I want that I'm kind of hunting for for the right price, and it's a Marvel Spotlight 5, probably in a CGC 7.5 or an 8. When I go on eBay right now and I'm looking to buy Marvel Spotlight 5 7.5, I'm looking it up, I can look up that book, and very yep. quickly, within five seconds, I can see what are the recent sales on it. Okay, 1,500, 1,700, 1,900. It gives us a price point that we can work with based on that level, you know. So based on that quality level, it's this. Based on you know, 9.0 is this. A 5.0 is this, and we can make a more informed decision. If there's no third-party grading, and I go look up Marvel Spotlight Five, and there's just a bunch of them sitting there on Scams. eBay. Yeah, if I've got an amazing eye, you know, to where I can look and see, and eBay hopefully maybe near ask me. the seller, hey, can you send me some more pictures? But now. The part that's not talked about very much at all here on YouTube or on IG, and I just flipped through IG, took some pictures of some stuff, just looking through what's what. You need to understand that dealers, LCSs, people are out there hunting, hunting for comic book collections the same way they are on the trading card side and antiques and all these other things. And a lot of these books, and I know that there's a lot of dealers that really prefer kind of selling ungraded books and, and they're they've got a great Old eye for it they dealers. can kind of they can sell it based on classic kind of the grade they see it as but i am telling you it's my opinion that eventually these ungraded books will arrive in a slab at yep. some point it's just a matter of time before you know those raw books they want to pre they want to be preserved by a collector or they want to grade on it whatever the case may be a flipper wants to have it so they can grade it and resell it whatever the case may be so you can be a hardcore dealer whatever, uh, LCS, and you're like, you know what, we're only going to deal in ungraded books. That's fine, but eventually, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, I am convinced that all of these books, or a vast majority, a lot of them, especially the important key books, and I'm really kind of hitting on the key, the bronze, the copper, the silver age books, will eventually land in CGC slabs. What does that mean for you and me? Well, if we're out and we're looking to buy one of these, we're looking at the census report to try to get an idea of how many exist in a 7.5. Marvel Spotlight 5, great example. How many exist in a 7.5.8? How many exist in a 9? How many exist in a 5? The, the truth is, and one thing, I know I kind of get on to Comic Tom occasionally, because sometimes his, on his show, he's got guys on there that are like, get, uh, get in on this now, and they say no, stupid not Comic stuff. Tom. But the one thing I do like stupid. about Tom, Comic Tom's show, when they do the top, 10, the top 10, is they talk about the increase in the census over a week or over the last month. He'll say on there, you know, in a 9-8, there's been an additional 200 copies graded in the last yeah, 30 days. Yeah, but how does he get that information? That is the is most even important accurate? information that he provides me over the pricing information. Because that tells me, okay, if they just graded 200 more, if the census for the 9-8, for whatever that book is just literally doubled over the last two months. I'm just kind of throwing out numbers here. Somebody's then watching that tells the census me a lot. every day. That tells me that there are still a lot of supply out there and actually some great copies still out there in a 9.8. Now maybe CGC for that particular book will never grade another 9.8 again. But I'm gonna be conservative and think, you know what, if they're graded 200 in the last two months and they got 9.8s, 
I bet there's going to be more over the next six months, over the next year. And then I ask myself, what are the census reports going to look like in a year or three years or five years? And am I in a big rush Patience. on any particular Patience book? Is key. And again, this I'm talking it, mainly man. about bronze, copper, silver age books. There's also golden age books that, that they find out. But I know there's a lot coming to grading. I know there's going to be more. So then I'm kind of like, what is my big rush to go out and get that book right no this rush. second? Can it wait? Maybe six months down the road, a year down the road, that book's price is down 20, 30%, not because people hate the book, not because there's not demand for it, but just because there's another few hundred copies. There's another 500 copies that have been graded. Like I said, don't underestimate the boom of grading that is happening right now and then the values associated with those grades. There's going to be a big, I know there's a big kind of a warring yeah. going on, you know, we in the comic slabs. book world of ungraded versus graded. And especially with CGC's challenges lately, it's, oh, don't grade, don't grade. Stay stay raw, stay with the ungraded stuff. Guys, there will be scams, just like there's scams with the more. graded stuff. There's probably just as many, if not more, more raw scams, scams for ungraded stuff, whether it be restored or trimmed eBay, or not near you know, miss. there's a page missing or the page has been added. you got these kind of Frankenstein books that are out there. People are going to scam no matter what, but at least with third-party grading, we've got some type of protections. There's a company, a company's actually working towards providing safekeeping for these, for these books. This video was excellent. This guy is smart. This guy needs to have a bigger voice. This was extremely well done. He hit on so many just vital points and he's, he's calling BS where he sees BS. He's calling out these YouTubers who deal at, or who are dealers that, that double as dealers. And I mean, there's so many of them. It, most of the big guys, half of the big guys are dealers. So you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt. I've been harping on that for years now. But anytime anybody's trying to sell you something and then also give you information, you have to question why they're giving you that information and what type of information they are giving you if they're giving you the whole story. This guy is pointing out something that is, is huge. And a lot of people that are really into this game, this is common sense, but it really isn't. You have to look at the CGC census. You have to think how many of these books, how many 9.8s, how many of these books exist. And one look at a Hulk 181 uh, CGC census will tell you this book is not rare. One look at ASM 300 CGC census will tell you the book is not rare. And what does that mean? There are even more raw copies out there waiting to be graded, which this guy has nailed it. No matter how hard these old school dealers or I only deal in raw comics. Well, no matter how hard you try to have this purity, this, you know, this, this pure nation of comic books, um, newsflash, uh, a lot of people want slab books. They want the book uh, preserved. They want it to display it. They they like having the, the security of having a book graded. It it people want this service. They want this. So to deny that or pretend like you know that's the hill you're going to die on of you know I'm going to keep keep these things and selling them raw. Well, good luck because you're going to go the way of the dodo bird and you're going to die off. This guy also touched on the importance of having a grade breakdown as well, as well as the price breakdown. Like using the grades as kind of a judge of what the price should be. Just having a ballpark because so many times, I mean, before grading was a thing, you didn't know like how much this raw book should be worth. We have hard and fast numbers now. We kind of have an idea. Okay, this 7.5 is worth this. This 5.0 is worth this. He is hitting on something that is so important for, for graded comic books in general. Now, I'm not even kissing this guy's butt because he did make a video about me. Apparently, he made a video called, uh, Is Sticky Goose Like the Biggest Villain in the Comic Book Community? And I was like, hold on a minute. Where did this come from? I watched this video, which has apparently gotten up some pretty good traction. And then that video was recommended to me next. And I was like, okay, hold on a minute. I like this guy. Um... You know, he's shooting his shot and uh, he's, he's very pragmatic. He's realistic. He's looking at things from, from an objective lens and he's smart. One look at this guy's YouTube channel can kind of determine, hey, this guy gets it. He knows how to get clicks, get traction, um, how thumbnails work. You know, it, it's more, 
he's he's trying to do entertainment and uh, information at the same time, which is that perfect blend. One way or the other, too much entertainment, too much information, in my opinion, that doesn't make the best content, and this guy gets it. So with that all out of the way, are comic book YouTubers lying? I think they're telling half truths. They're they're not telling the whole story. You know, this buy now, this top ten, this hot book. Yeah, the, these books are getting hot. Yeah, these books are you know they're they're selling more. But the question is is are more to come? What are these books actually rare? Are there more coming to the census? Is this the time to buy? This guy is is he sounds like he's going to be patient. He's going to look at things um, long term. He's going to look at some supply and demand. He's going to look at uh, census. How many of these books exist? I think this is what we should all be doing: being much more objective, much more pragmatic, looking at things from a long-term perspective. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.